everything about the adventure of Lord of the Flies was unique. We lived a very, very tough experience all in the same place, all together for three months. The children were all real boys and not professionals. And I think the boys we found were so close to the characters they had to play that directing was not trying to impose a characterization. It was making the boys feel at ease and believe in what they were doing and then do it spontaneously and naturally. And in the end, the story is very cruel very hard, very violent, and in all honesty we had to ask the children to do something quite alarming, which was really to give themselves to it. We should know what has become of these children. We were responsible for a group of boys. We need to know what has become of them. For the last 10 years, one way or other, I've been trying to find the possibility of bringing all of us together again, just to discover what had we done to the children? What had we maybe done for them? And quite simply, what have they become? In 1961, Peter Brook made the feature film Lord of the Flies on the tiny Caribbean island of Vieques, just off Puerto Rico. All I need, he said, is a beach, some children, and a camera. And that is what he took. With 35 boys aged between 8 and 14, Brook shot for three months and ended up with over 60 hours of rushes. In William Golding's story, a stranded group of schoolboys have to fend for themselves in a deserted island and in the process become a mirror of adult society. Five central characters emerge. Ralph and Piggy are the voices of reason. Ralph, elected the boys' leader, represents government and the rule of law, with Piggy his pragmatic advisor. Pitted against them are Jack and his evil cohort, Roger. They lead the hunters who seize power as a society descends from discipline to savagery. Then there is Simon, the innocent victim of the community's breakdown. He is misunderstood and eventually murdered. Present among the crowd are the twins, Sam and Eric, the mob, to be roused or subdued. Lord of the Flies emerged as a groundbreaking semi-documentary film of immense power and controversy. It was banned to children under 16 in the UK, effectively preventing many of its protagonists from seeing themselves on screen. But astonishingly, Brooke had received willing permission from the parents of these children for them to be marooned away from home to live out his disturbing cinematic vision of Golding's book. A brooding curiosity over the consequences of this experiment has stayed with Brooke till this day. And that lingering concern has now led to an invitation to the central characters in the film to return to the island of Vieques and to close the circle. <laughs> that was very good, Toby. Very good. The last time I saw it, I think I noticed a little notice at the end of the film saying, no boys were harmed during the making of this film. <laughs> <laughs> Lies. <laughs> Sorry, I said no boys were seriously harmed. No, seriously. When we made the film, it was absolutely necessary to do what's very, very rare in filmmaking, which was to tell the story from beginning to end in strict chronological order. And that meant that they were actually living two lives. They were living the life of the camp before we started shooting and after and when they went to bed. But during the day, they were actually living something that was growing. 
the roots were going deeper and deeper into them. So by the end of the film, they were not the same. Now, was this something that would just then wash away? Or was it something that would leave a trace? And would that trace be something that is valuable? Would it, like all strong experiences, form them? Chapin had some illegal drink, and now Hein took it off him and threw it across here, and all the clients started the next day. Do you remember that? No. Yeah. The trouble is I can't remember. Lurking in the bushes. You look different in colour. Hey, man. <laughs> How you doing? Great. Yeah. You're not bald, and, and uh, so I think someone's one. You, you got lost. a beard. Yeah, I want to have a book. We had a book on you to see what, how'd you look like. Hi, how are you doing, Hugh? Very well. You? Good, good. You look just a trifle larger than every yeah, you're, 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 you're all getting it off on me, I know. No, we're going to keep an eye on you. Simon Sergius. Nice to see you. Nice to see you again. A little moist. So who won the money? Well, this is so cruel springing this on you. you well, know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> who had the bet with the beard? I said he was bald. I had the bet with the beard. Oh, yes, you said he had a beard. That's the second round. That's the second round. Last we ever heard of you. Yes. <laughs> I said one of them would be bald, James. Yes. You look like you're just about to climb Everest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have been. I have been. Yeah. You just arrived. The yeah. second. Just, just, just this moment. And here I am at the Eckes house, looking through all the sugarcane fields. Welcome yeah. home. Didn't find the sugarcane fields. Yeah. 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 How are you? Toby Robertson, a theatre director in his own right, was Brooke's assistant director on the island in 1961. Show me. Oh, <laughs> Toby. Toby. Oh, Toby. I think I hidden by some little area. Anyway, not. This and there one. There's a little no. rather limp flower. <laughs> it's limp. a welcome the flower of the island. The flower of the island. Oh. But it's all frightfully different. No, this is about the same. Well, this apparently the one, this little green strip that we yes. used to come on, yes. was, was further down oh. there. And this is all for the view. <laughs> Jerry File worked with Brooke for over two years on the film and has become a long-time friend and collaborator. Who would have thought it? Actually, so you have uh, your uh, hat? I have my hat. I have years ago. a beautiful present from Toby. So I'll pop it on one. Sitting up and watching the moon landings, I didn't know that was the end of that quite well. What is it? Curious? Well, 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 well. Hello there. So, who is who? <laughs> well, yeah, well, first moment of shock. First moment of shock. moment of shock. So, if we'd met on a railway station, who would have recognised who? Um, I would recognise you. <laughs> yes, yes, I would recognise you. Yes, yes, yes. Well, that's very good. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, it's lovely to see you again. Well, you saw him quite recently, not me. <laughs> <laughs> you saw him in Nottingham, but not me. No. me. In Nottingham. Me. You saw him in Nottingham with the, the, the man who. Yeah. You both finish one another's sentences. Yes, we still, still do. Yes, yes, we still do. Yes, we have. Quite recently. What, about five years ago? Yes, it was, yeah. Yes. And here's one you haven't seen for some time. I haven't seen you for some time, but Tom. 
I'm Tom. It's you. I'm Sue. <laughs> he doesn't recognize well, he's me. Got a, he's got he another doesn't Tom recognize around here. There he is. <laughs> this is the other Tom. This is Gamer. This is Chief. I no, turned no, out no. how you said I was going to turn out. You said I was going to go grow tall and thin from being short and fat. And so I did. No. You have changed. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't changed. Like me, I mean, one has oh, to yeah. cut off. Yeah. does change in certain <laughs> ways. <laughs> That's the end. Oh, well, wonderful to see you. I look forward to this. Uh -huh. this. Now there, it's the opposite. If I do something, <laughs> I'm, I'm absolutely unchanged, but of course, this naturally, I don't expect. <laughs> I've never seen this before. It's, it's a, a trailer. trailer. It's a trailer. Snare. Ah. I don't have a snare in my makeup. I said snare. Oh, it's doing by your lips, not your makeup. Oh, okay. <laughs> so touchy. <laughs> These artists. Oh. Suddenly everyone's a critic. Yeah, really. Everybody's gone popular. You know, you ought to watch them some more. My favorite group. Especially in this country. I never liked it. <laughs> it was so good to get rid of it. I remember this very, very clearly. I don't know if you do. The very, very first time mm -hmm. you were there on the beach in blazers and sweaters and thick socks. Oh. And we got the scene together and we rehearsed it. And I said, now we must do it again. And nobody could understand this. <laughs> they said, but we've done it. And I said, yes, but that was just trying it out. And now it's not right for the camera. I made all these explanations. And I don't know. How, how that process went on and whether you really became I must say, adjusted for, for me, that. it was just another opportunity to do it wrong. Because <laughs> 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 I was wrong the first time, I never felt any better after that. Can I, can I drink a, a toast to you and to us? No, but to us. Time to us. To us. Yeah. Time to us. In a case! I think for all of us, what was striking after the first surprise of seeing how people physically had changed was to see the small boy still very clearly in them. And it is that thing of how you've changed, but you haven't changed. Peter Brook directed the Peter Brook directed with you and for the egg marketing board. Come on, let's try it. You got paid for this one. I got real money for it. <laughs> Probably the thing that stopped me being an actor for life was an audition with Walt Disney to do a film called, I believe, Wonderful. The Horse Without a Head. When the director following the audition said, "You can't act." And I said to him, well, you can't direct. <laughs> and, and this was at the age of 11. <laughs> that was the end of my career. I, I did amateur dramatics while I was at school, and that was equally as traumatic. <laughs> we went straight from Lord of the Flies to a prep school, which Lord of the Flies had actually, I think, toughened us up. Toughened us. Absolutely. And then at 18, we, we split. I went to Devon to be a journalist. You and I, I stayed at home stayed. and I was in retail for a year, but I preferred the um, yeah. people to the stock. <laughs> uh, after that, I went into the political world and I've been in political organisation mm. with the Conservative Party ever since yeah. in various parts of the country. And you went a different way. I eventually found myself in an employment agency where I was finding jobs for people who was doing accountancy or something like that. And now I'm a careers advisor. So in some ways, we've both enjoyed working with people. Well, after the Lord of the Flies, I went back to Jamaica where I was living because my father was in the British Army, the Royal Hampshire Regiment. I was at school in Germany for two years. And after that, Singapore. And I came back from Singapore in 65 and I didn't know anyone because I'd, I'd never lived in Britain. And it's very strange arriving in a country you call home and there's nothing you have in common with it at all. Anyway, dear Mr. Robertson, 
gave me a job as an assistant stage manager with the Prospect Theatre Company. And I learned my trade for two years. And suddenly I find myself to be a professional actor. Um, I, I, I've done TV shows and a few films. I've had some successes and uh, some failures. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't we all? <laughs> and uh, I'm what is known as a jobbing actor. But at the moment I have a job to go back to and I'm pleased for that. Hey, good old. That mu oh, here we are. Hey. Oh, this is it. Color. This is, Color. <laughs> this is my father's 8mm. Wow! Oh! 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 Yeah. 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 Can you two tell who were you? No, who I can't. No, I don't know who that is. Can you, you, you don't know who it was? No, I don't know who that is. I don't know if that's me or him. I don't recognize this at all. I don't think we'll know until we get there. No, but it never was as green as all this. It's much drier. Okay, the question is, do we trespass and just head up the mountain in an official sort of motorcade? We could do that. There was only one thing that was necessary in the project, and that was absolute freedom. And absolute freedom means working much more cheaply than if you have all the means that you want, because you have to then give something back in exchange, which is control to the producer. So here we had to work on such a low budget. There was only 100% professional film technician, and that was Jerry File, who did a bit of everything. He was the second camera, he worked closely with me, and then in the editing, we edited over a year in Paris, working together. What the task I was given to do, among other production tasks, but the real task, was to find a point of view with my camera, a point of view which was different from the point of view that the main camera was set to photograph, and the point of view for which the scene was staged, to find anything I thought might illustrate some useful detail about a character, advance the story in some way that hadn't been planned. So I had the opportunity both to select the point of view that I wanted to photograph of the scene, then to work with the material as a film editor and m help mold it into something I never imagined was possible. When we came to edit the film, the film is a constant flow between the absolutely necessary shots that I was controlling there. He's not talking too much. and the shots that illuminate the action. And that's why there are no formal compositions. There's nothing that resembles that other artifice of filmmaking, which is making beautiful pictures. I think we ought to have a chief to decide things. I ought to be chief. All right, we'll have a vote. Who wants to act the chief then? Who wants me? I'm chief then. I was very, very conscious in everything I'm doing of something that, to this day, is an eternal question. How much you must intervene? Because if you don't intervene and do your job properly, you're letting everyone down. If you happen to be in a position of authority and responsibility, you have to take it on fully. And at the same time, can one at the same time be aware of the necessity all the time to step back and let life flow? And that mixture between planning and chance is something of permanent interest. Jack's in charge of the choir. What do you want them to be? Hunters. Golding's book seemed a simple solution of that. And I thought that a film could be made that could open these questions even further because the camera the documentary side of cinema gives you something unmistakably real. There was only one directing device that was needed, and that was casting rightly. Hey, what are you wearing those funny clothes for? 
It's our uniform. <laughs> you know, as a kid, it just it basically cured me of ever wanting to be wrecked on a desert island. All this walking around, and you just imagine going through it barefoot. Uh, it's not all that uh, pleasant a thought. <laughs> There we are, all trying to be uh, sort of savages, yet the rocks were winning, I'd say. They were so sharp that you couldn't really walk around. Hughes got maps. He's the expert. We've got a good map well, because this is That's a problem. <laughs> no, this, is, get one. this is military. Unlike the boys who were here for three months, who remembered very precisely what the geography of each place was like. I lived with that film in an editing room for a year and a half where we created an island from the bits and pieces that we'd done every place. And it had its own geography, the film geography, and I'm totally confused. Our communications corridor going up this draw here. <laughs> the hill is up there. Yeah, that but around. that's not it. I think we took a wrong turn. Congratulations. Oh, that's it over there. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Yep. It looks much uh, smaller when you're four foot six. <laughs> I mean, but bigger <laughs> when you're four foot six. We built the fire. We built, we built the fire just about on the other side. Yeah. Just on the other side. And then we had to climb up and just look over that crack. I can only remember things as they were in the film. I want to look at the picture now. And see. Yeah. Because <laughs> we made an imaginary island. chosen because he was already a type, born with a type that corresponded to his role in the story. Hi fellas, we're over here! And now, 35 years later, one sees that life works on each person's type within the limits of the type, but the type doesn't change. It's a shell. I've seen one like it before on someone's back wall. A conch, he called it. He used to blow it and then his mum would come. I blow this, will your mum come? He blew from down here. Mm. You got it! Mm. What do I have to do to get your attention? <laughs> <laughs> I think I got the wrong key. It's been a long time here. As a kid, I was always on the move. Always a new boy at school. In many schools I went to, I was piggy. I was picked on. And when I came here to do this picture, it was the first time, probably, anyone had paid any attention to me in my life. And um, you said, you know, it's a very responsible part and it's going to be very hard work. And for the first time in my entire life, I was important to someone. I was important to you and I felt responsible. And 
that was more important to me than movie making or anything else. I was trusted. I, I really liked that, <laughs> being well, wanted. Well, did you ever talk about the days filming together or about the story together? Or no, it wasn't we... that kind of relationship, was it? We had a, 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 a competitive thing. There was one particular scene that I remember doing many takes on. It was, um, you sneered down your nose at me and you said something like, you scared. Yeah, I remember that. And my line was, of course I am, who wouldn't be? And I couldn't say it. Yeah, we did four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten takes, and each time I said, no! As the film went along, it really was getting real. Mm. And it really had a life of it, and you could see it. Mm. I mean, I could see it in black and white, and I could see the whole film as it was coming. It was a long, it was what, three months we were here? Mm -hmm. Something like that. It was a long time, yeah, well, particularly at that age. It must have gone through a lot of ups and downs. Did you worry about what you did to us? Well, that's what I want to discover here and now. I didn't at the time. At the time, you, you know. didn't at the time. At the time, no. I was sort of generally concerned we had to see whether the counsellors were looking after you well and mm -hmm. but beyond that, I mean it was so difficult. That really every minute it was difficult and interesting and the whole day was round getting the film. And that's why it's very interesting now. One of the I think the strongest reasons why I wanted us to meet again. Do you think we were taking a risk? I don't know. I've spent quite a few years trying to erase Jack, but he didn't go away. <laughs> what do you mean by that? What form did that take? I mean, how, what's it mean to, to go on living with the character? Uh, I guess, basically, you cast us because we were like what we were like. Mm. And then you let us be that. Mm and see what the consequences of it were mm. and delight in the power mm. and for me anyway having turned you into jack as you say did that in the long run make you make life more difficult did that help did that harm i mean well, quite exactly did it help or did it harm can you say people have a tremendous tension when they see me and you know all my life, they get people who really adore me, and I have people who just hate the hell out. I've always wanted to be nice and well liked, and it's not really work out that way. Jack! I think that Peter has an agenda, and, a, and he has some ideas that he wants to, that he brought with him. He has some ideas. He's really obsessed with acting and actors, and, and as though the whole world is acting and actors. And he's kind of. Uh, you know, he, he expects us to be very deeply marked by Lord of the Flies, but of course we aren't. Uh, or at least I'm not terribly. Uh, James, on the other hand, I think he had a tremendous effect on. I, I think James is always acting and I'm really kind of interested because I think he's starting to feel now. You know, you know before it was, uh, you know, when we first met, there's a lot of fronts, many fronts. Uh, I think now he's beginning to sort of move uh, a little bit away from uh, the fronts. And he's starting to be a little bit more himself. I, I think that maybe he'll uh, eventually become uh, Ralph once again. I, I'm kind of hoping because he was very energetic when he was a kid. Hi. Right. Buenos senor. <laughs> when I when I left Vieques when we finished filming in 1961, I didn't want to be an actor at all. I was particularly wanted to uh, be a doctor. Good God, no! Actually, now I'm working in Russia. Um, looking after a couple of Mars factories making confectionery and dog and cat food. So it's a very different existence. I've never considered myself to be piggy in any respect. Um, for a start, I'm not sensible <laughs> or logical. Um, I, I have always said I've had a different opinion about piggy than, than many other people. Um, I'm not sure if it was different from Bill Golding. I never really discussed it properly with him. 
uh, when it came to do my O-level English literature, when the question was asked, uh, describe the character of Piggy, I'm sure my answer was significantly different from everybody else's, but I did pass, so it must have been acceptable to the examiner. But um, I felt Piggy never, never really realised the, the potential power he had and his ability to influence the situation. He was a, a wise counsel, but not quite wise enough. He, he didn't understand the motivating forces, that, it, that if he'd understood them a bit better, maybe at the end, of, maybe at the end he did. Uh, you know, when, when he's standing on Castle Rock, maybe at the end he did, but, but generally there's a lot of, of, of rubbish comes out of his mouth, in my view, during the film. Um, as I say, I think that's probably very different from other people, but I, and, and possibly I feel I can say things about Piggy that other people wouldn't say, because there's a fairly close relationship between us. Have you written a letter to your auntie lately? I don't know where she is now, and I haven't got an envelope or a stamp. And there isn't a pillar box or a postman. <laughs> I haven't seen anything very funny. <laughs> Don't make a sound. Get you, Piggy. Piggy. Where are you, Piggy? Congratulations. Peter and the crew lived in a hotel just up the road, and we lived in this disused pineapple cannery that they made into a dormitory for us to live in. Well, this was then the court. And there was a thatch. Um, there was a thatch. Yeah. And there was the sticks at the front here. too, with the, um, with the, yeah. Well, there it is. There it is. There's the canopy. Kind of right. Goodness me. Well, there's the gate is it, right is this there. The front or the back? Yeah, yeah that's the gate. Right. You all right? Hey, wait for me! I can't hardly move for all these creepy things. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember very much about this place. Thank God I never stayed here. We're on an uninhabited island. But it's a good island. There's lots of fruit, water, and I'm pretty sure there aren't any dangerous animals. So things aren't so bad. And we can build shelters and be comfortable. If we don't lose our head, we'll be all right. See, if we go up front, we might actually see where the, um, the front of the building was, where we used to have the assemblies in the morning, where he, Brooke, would arrive and tell us what we were doing for the day. Oh, I just, the film affected my life in a way that I couldn't have imagined. I thought the film would come out it would be seen, it would be um, something that was there. I wasn't prepared for how important the film seemed to become in terms of a film production. At the time, we weren't aware of the immense reputation of Peter Brook. And then when we came back to England and we started to see his name in the papers quite a lot, he produced the very famous King Lear the year after we made the film. And I suddenly thought, hey, you know, I've worked with this man and how proud I was to have done something like that, that nobody I have met in my life has done in a similar way, you know. Of all the kids in all the world, we were the 30 who were chosen to do it. And it's just really fantastic feeling. Does anybody know who this is? 
Too bad. None of us. Well, the guy that was supposed to be Jack, but never was. You did look very evil, you two boys, actually. Then, I mean, you did have an evil look about you. I think that's what Peter cast you all for, really. What are you doing, Debbie? Are you enthralled by the Master's work? I don't remember the things I didn't enjoy. I mean, people have reminded us about incidents that took place or uh, difficulties that took place. Those sort of things have um, really escaped uh, from my memory. And I don't remember not enjoying the experience at all. I really don't. This week, we're having the opportunity to come back together to uh, reopen this spectacular page of our life and decide, well, what effects did it have on us? Was this really something that came and went? I, it's, there's been 35 years that have c come and gone. We've lived through many, many other parts of our lives. And to tell you the truth, I rarely think about my role of Simon so many years ago. But here, this opportunity came, and here we are. And, these people are people that we can take up relationships with and we can start looking at our own lives and saying well what what impact did this really have on our lives in my case i'm a forester and i work and live in the out of doors uh, my business trips are camping trips now, did this all come from the role of simon no it was me but the role of simon exaggerated and allowed me to become who I am. And it's the first time this week that I come back here, I can realize that a lot of my frustrations in my professional life don't really need to exist at all because I am who I am. I have this, this foundation of simplicity. <laughs> Things are best distilled into simple terms uh, with perhaps that innocence of leaving out all of the other complicating um, elements, I seem to be best at that still. And I haven't appreciated until maybe right now that um, these same characteristics in my personality were those that Brooke um, utilized and um, and uh, saw in 1961. This is probably the last time I'll ever, I'll ever have in these few days to, to get close to these people and for us to examine, are these our roles because Peter made, them, made us this way or are these roles that we played, are they us? I wanted to talk to you because since we spoke at the beginning of the week or since you spoke to us at the beginning of the week I've been thinking very hard about where we'd all come from since 1961 and the only thing I could do about it was this morning I had to write it all out in my diary about my feelings about it mm -hmm. and I felt really that I, I wanted to share them with you to see what you felt and so basically here we are and uh, I, I, I wondered how you would feel about me sharing it with you and, and with the others if you felt that was right. I think what is beginning to happen is that our characters are coming to life. Tom, Jack is 
a restless, self-centered person, but you have to respect him because he's aware of this and, and lives his life accordingly. Hugh Piggy is, is the soulless pragmatist. He cannot relax and go with the flow. He needs to have a role. He needs to have something to do. Ralph James has started out well enough in his acting career, but he now has to take work which sometimes he doesn't respect, but crucially, he still has the chance to do more. Just, it's the same chance that Golding gave Ralph at the end of the book. He doesn't die, he has the chance to go on. Tom, Simon seems to be at one with himself, is now prepared to contribute given the opportunity. The twins remain outsiders. Their closeness and their ability to share with themselves is setting them apart and at some stages actually has been intimidating other people. But I do believe that there is a, a direct connection also to Peter's work since Lord of the Flies in all this. Be because I feel that he believes that, that the true purpose of the expressive arts and therefore of expressive artists is to provide the catharsis for audiences to change their lives if they wish to do it. The major problem is that most of us are not trained artists. So I now believe that Peter runs the risk of abandoning us all to fate just as he did in 1961 when he plucked us out from our schools and our homes, put us on the island and then cast us back again to live our lives as if, as if nothing would ever change. I still feel an outsider, but I, I know I have the potential to grow from this experience. And I think others can do too. And if we don't do something about this, then I think we run the risk of not learning anything about this week. That's what I felt at 7.15 this morning. I think you said that you're now being confronted with it 35 years later. I find it very odd that that confrontation hasn't happened much earlier. Mm -hmm. I mean, perhaps things really do remain very much more hidden below the surface than one ever likes to, to, uh, to imagine. The, the interesting thing is that I don't know of anybody who was in the film who has maintained friendships with anybody else in the film, other than you two, which is obviously what happened <laughs> anyway. But, um, but that seems strange, doesn't it? If, it, if it's a, uh, a life-changing experience, you would have thought that there would be some link maintained beyond the film. I, don't I can't think understand it's, that. I, I, I think it's an unspoken bond. Mm. As Piggy might have said, we don't have to meet and have tea. No. It's clear that what is most interesting, always, is what's happening now. Yes. This is where we are. What we lived through in the past is giving a certain stamp to this moment that if we'd got together a half a dozen people that we'd happened to meet on the plane to San Juan, we would not be sitting here in the same way. And I think that that's where the interest lies. I mean, The Lord of the Flies was a documentary in the sense that you were all being as true to yourselves as possible. And yet, you couldn't have done that if there hadn't been a story to tell. And the story itself is a very pessimistic one, because it says that a meeting like this is useless. That in the end, people won't deeply wish to listen deeply to one another. That's what the story says. Because constantly, the blowing of the conch, we must have a meeting, we have a meeting like this, and one sees that the secret flow that could have avoided calamity, no, the rock drops. Now, I think that's in a way is the interesting question now when it's the real people without a story, without an end in a script. Do we believe that coming together in this way is a human device that's doomed 
is it possible to listen to another or we say, well, <laughs> right? Can we grow from we, Yeah, experience? can we? Or yeah. we all kiss one another, exchange a, f a few words, and in fact, at bedrock, nothing can be touched. That's the pessimistic view of Golding, I think. Piggy, huh? that was murder. You stop it. What good are you doing talking like that? It was dark. There was that bloody dance. There was thunder and lightning and rain. We were scared. It wasn't what you said. Oh, Piggy! It was an accident. Now the, yeah, the, 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 the buttress one right yeah. up there is where the stone was dropped from. Yeah. This is the cave, yeah. and over the top on the other side is, yeah. is there's a rock, and that little lagoon extends out from that coral reef. I walked staggered out of the woods on the other side, yes. down to the yes. beach, and floated off. Yeah. But that's really much higher than I thought. They must have, there's a fence up above it. So where did you all squat? You squatted along the skyline? Yes, yes. That's along right. the skyline. That wonderful shot of all the sand all of along the, the, yeah. the skyline. Up down there? Yeah, because the rock came down to the right on top of the picture. Yeah. Heaved by Roger and that. Yeah, yeah this looks place. like... I remember sort of sitting right about here and looking out. It feels like the entrance. seem to remember we got on. Yeah, we sure got on, but at the same time we competed. I mean, you're... But those were our parts. Oh, yeah. yeah. And we were encouraged, of course, to form a... Mm -hmm. Form a rivalry. Form a rivalry. Yeah. yeah. I got, always remember the, the quality you had more than anything else, and I, I put this, up, uh, I suppose, upon your American background, the fact that you lived there, I know you spent a lot of time in Britain, but uh, the cool that you had was uh, something that I envied enormously, still do, that it may not be true, but you don't seem to be that concerned about what people think of you, whereas but I'm terrified about what an ant thinks of me. <laughs> I, had, I had fronts, I had defensive fronts, they were very strong, uh, a lot of it was that, that cold the, the dead face and then like that. That was all very strong. That was to protect me from other kids. Yeah. If you're not concerned about what people think of you, then they can't hurt you. And uh, when I came here, that was the first time that people looked up to me. And so I had to now fulfill sort of expectations that I had about myself because it was a saga. You know, whether it be to say the unexpected or to or to do something outrageous. And so I would 
do a lot of that. And my life became a saga on and off set a lot of the time. How could we kill it? Uh, it's been something very difficult to beat since because some of that became really ingrained. I've, I've had these ad adventures across the Caribbean or across the Atlantic, you know, and they always had this sort of thing like the cameras on you type of feel to them. My image of you was also, um, uh, you know, a, a self-confident, nice guy. He didn't need to play games. He was just so you know, honest, and he meant it, you know, and... I'd like to meet this guy. Yeah, well, that was my image of you, but I hear James doesn't see himself that way. It's and possible that I've changed. I'm trying to resolve the real you from my image of you. I've been trying to find out for years, and the decision I made to become a professional actor and go to drama school was maybe one way of solving that, of getting around it, getting around the fact that I think of myself as a blank sheet of paper until I have a part. And when I have a part, I know who I am, I know where I'm going, and I invest myself into that part. But when, when the job's over, then it's back to looking at the wall again and thinking, who am I gonna be next week? Or, next month and, and sometimes I, I look at Lord of the Flies and think that was the kernel, that was the center of a, a child has more truth than an adult. So are you coming back here to capture that? Yeah, regain lost childhood. I mean, all these sights and sounds that, that surrounded us, uh, my parents were alive at that time. Mm -hmm. And it was the first time I'd ever been away from home. So the memories that come back are one of my mum and dad in Jamaica and writing to them and receiving letters from them. So all, all that is intermingled with meeting you guys again and so on. The other thing I remember about this particular place is uh, there's a rock out there. Uh -huh. In my... 13-year-old imagination, it always reminded me of a, a sinking Spanish galleon because it's shaped yeah. like the end of a, a ship. And uh, for 35 years, I've had n dreams about this bay and the sinking Spanish galleon. If ever I came back to Vieques, this is where I wanted to be. I've always wanted to come back I knew I would before I, before I died. Do you think you could make another film or play or anything mm. by using the same technique as all of the but, but with adults? Would that be an experiment you'd wish to repeat, or...? Uh... I think you can do that in many things in movies. You can't do that in the theatre. In the theatre, you know, you have to be heard, you have to master a whole lot of things. In movies, people do do that all the time. They do no, but sort of think you see, I think it's be, before, be, before I could talk about it in a general way, I could say, technically, this is how we pushed the rock down. This is how we did Piggy's death, from what I remember. But this week, I really feel I've touched the sound again and by the touch it seemed to me intuitively a hunch that, it, that on the basis of our past experience there was something incomplete that could be not necessarily completed but developed by our coming together again after 35 years yeah, but I'm still not clear I never have been you know I mean, if, if, if you were setting out to make a film presumably he wanted some End. You have to know where you're going. I mean, like when you do a production, I know what I want to get to the end. I don't. No, 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 well, no, 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 no. That I really feel very, that, very strongly. Yeah. I feel that every but, production I've done, I've done productions that have seemed to me to be unsatisfying and ones that haven't been satisfying. The satisfying ones have been ones that organically took their own path, and at the end, all that started off 
fell into place. It's just the same as in gardening or cooking. You bring together ingredients and you watch it, you help it, but in the end it takes on its own shape. But then what do you feel about this taking on any shape or no shape? I mean, what do you feel we're getting on? Why do we have to get something? Well, I don't know, but I have a feeling that that is a sort of uh, a burden that is sort of sent on, on, on the shoulder. Perhaps it, the answer is there is, there is no. That there well, is I think that the more you think, what yeah. am I going to get? The less you, the more you take yourself out of it. Here and now, in a very simple sense, you and I are sitting here together. This is either satisfying for us or, or not. And fuck what we get or we don't get, because even thinking of it cuts us off from what is really there. Now, what I think is much more important is have you got faith? simple faith that a living process is worth living. If you haven't, then it isn't worth Give living it yet. Exactly. Give it up. But if you do, then the living process is worth living to the degree that it's strong, intense, rich and alive. Well, I, 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 this I find fascinating because I, in, a feel, in a way I feel that the pressure to talk about it has come from you. Yeah, because we I have mean, to no, give us a do something yeah, right, for the right, camera. Right. And That's I think now, are. in a way, it's, it's wonderful to hear you almost denying the process <laughs> that we have to go through. Right. Totally. All that matters is that when all is said and done, what we do makes life a little less gloomy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, if I go on repeating this often enough, we will succeed in plunging everyone into <laughs> perpetual gloom. <laughs>